All right, so the amount of work that you do against the conservative force field is gonna go into the potential energy of the charge, which means that the charge is gonna become energy. All right, so that is the concept that you guys kind of get, except when I change the scenario, you guys kind of get confused. And then I will kind of trick you time and time again. And then I will point out the fact that you already know the answer. All right, so we actually went over the answer one more time. But every time I change the scenario, you guys will get slightly confused. So this is a good practice. All right. Take a look at the negative charge. Notice that this negative charge is placed right next to the negative charge region, this plate. Okay, what kind of potential energy does this charge have? Is it high or is it low? Okay, you kind of, this is kind of a trick question. You kind of know the answer. Okay, so very good. Now this charge, negative charge placed right next to the negative charge plate is gonna have high potential energy. So justify as to why it's gonna have high potential energy. Because, because it's also a negative charge and that plate is negatively charged, so they're gonna to wanna to repel each other. Okay, very good. So you have to do work to get the conservative force field. Very good. I'm gonna give you five points for that one. So that's the correct explanation. All right, now this next step. This is, notice that the plate, the point eight. Okay, so VA, this is the potential of the positive charge plate. Notice that it says high potential for this one. And for the negative charge plate, it says low potential. All right. What does that even mean? Why is it that this is high potential, this is low potential? What's the meaning of potential if that's the case? Okay, so at this point, I'm looking for an interpretation from your side. We haven't really discussed it in, within this context. We're, we're dealing with potential difference. Potential difference is, what does it mean? When we say potential, we mean the amount of energy stored within the electric field between the opposite charge region. But why do we say this is high potential, this is low potential? What makes it this a high potential? What makes this a low potential? What's the meaning of it? All right, one thing that I want you to notice before we have a formal discussion. Notice that the high potential is associated with positively charged region and the low potential is associated with negatively charged region. All right, so just in your minds, I want you guys to make that connection. So high potential is associated with the positive charged region and the low potential is associated with the negatively charged region. So what is that supposed to mean? This is something that we have to circle back to after we come up with a gravitational analogy. Someone is about to say something. Is it right. the potential to do work? All right, so potential is the, oh, the potential is the amount of energy stored per charge within the lack of field for now. That's the definition we will go with. And I'm going to give you two points for that comment. All right, so um, to opposite charge regions inside a capacitor, this is a parallel to a capacitor. Notice that one region is positive charge, the second region is negative charge. Uniform charge distribution is assumed, which means that the strength of the electric field is constant within that region. You drop a charge in it, the charge becomes energized. You free the charge, now that potential energy turns into kinetic, uh, which means that it's going to have predictable speed. Predictable. So if you place a charge inside a region of potential, meaning that inside a region where the energy is stored within the strength within the electric field, which means that the energy is going to get transferred to the charge. So which means that the charge now is energy. All right, this is like the 10th or 20th time I'm going over it. Hopefully one time it's just going to resonate with you. All right, so the world's field potential represents the, uh, the amount of energy stored within the strength of the electric field between two charge regions. And what else? Okay, so... All right, let's clean up the definition of potential and potential energy. All right, guys, potential energy P represents the amount of energy stored in a charge. All right, so potential is the amount of energy stored within the electric field per charge. That's what it means. All right, so potential is the amount of energy stored in, inside the electric field per charge. So you're dealing with the amount of energy stored per charge. So amount of energy stored per charge is known as voltage of pressure. So this is the straightforward definition. Of it. Okay, so now let's talk about gravitational potential energy versus the gravitational potential of weird content. All right, here's a question for you. Notice that there are two rocks. Okay, one of them is gonna have small mass, the other one is gonna have a larger mass. All right, so lowercase m is gonna be the smaller mass and then capital M is gonna be the bigger mass. Question, which one is a large potential energy? The one on the left or the one on the right? Which one is going to have a larger potential energy? The one on the right. Okay, how do you come up with that? Because the... Uh formula <laughs> okay who said that right ian go to hell <laughs> don't say formula i need a better explanation give yourself five points because of the formula i want something a bit more than that the reason is because uh the bigger the mass is the more energy is going to be stored in for a given system right okay you kind of got that. i think that's what you mean all right so h is the same as distance y obviously all right so both of them are at the same height the altitude all right and both of them are at the same elevation. Let's go with all the elevation. Except the bigger mass is going to have more energy stored in it. So which one is going to have more potential energy? The bigger mass for a given distance. Okay, now let me just change the scenario. Which one is at a higher elevation? Which one has more voltage or potential if that's the case? All right, so the, which one is going to have more energy stored per mass? 
each point. All right, now you're talking about elevation, right? Notice that which one is going to have more energy stored per? Be the same, right? It's going to be the same. Do you guys notice that voltage potential in this case means just the height, the elevation? Which one is at higher voltage? Both of them are at the same voltage. That's what it means. Okay, now its analogy is going to work out so much better. All right, both of them are at the same voltage. The voltage in this case represents elevation. So this represents the amount of gravitational energy stored at this elevation. That's what it means. And then when you put a mass in it, what happens? That mass becomes energy. It's that altitude. It's that elevation. So the voltage and potential has the analogy, gravitational analogy of height. So when you drop an object, you guys notice that it goes from a higher voltage towards the lower voltage. Does that make sense? So it's the same as saying that the object will fall from a higher elevation towards the lower elevation. That's what the, the conservative force field does. Now we don't have to worry about masses. We know that there's going to be a voltage or potential difference, and then you know that the object will fall from a higher voltage towards the lower voltage. What that means in English, objects will fall from a higher altitude towards the lower altitude. So if there's a height difference, and if there's a conservative force field, what the conservative force field is going to do is it's going to pull the object from a higher altitude towards the lower altitude. It's going to take that energy and then turn it into a kinetic energy of that object. So if there's voltage difference, in this case height difference, so I'm going to call this V at this point, high, and now I'm going to call this V, low. So if there is a voltage difference, the objects will move from a higher voltage towards the lower voltage under the influence of a conservative force field. It's the same thing. All right, so having said that, if it's positive charge, this is going to represent a higher altitude or elevation, positive charge region. If there's a negative charge region, once again, we will go with the elevation, uh, elevation analogy. So this is going to represent a lower elevation. So you got the higher elevation, you got the lower elevation. And notice that the positive charges will move from a higher elevation towards the lower elevation. All right, so this is your voltage difference. So your voltage difference is going to represent the strength of the electric field times the separation rate. Okay, so this is the second layer of looking at. So the voltage or potential difference means the same as voltage. It means the same thing. All right, so this is a good way of looking at it. All right. Wow, this is still working. All right. Let's get back. All right, so gravitational potential energy is the amount of energy stored in the mass. So the gravitational potential is going to represent the amount of energy available. Uh, within the gravitational force field per mass. So now this is the amount of energy available per mass. Okay, so it's just gonna be related to the altitude. V here is gonna be U divided by M. So it's just only gonna depend on the height. All right, so let's make that point so you guys can remember it. So V, this is the amount of energy stored, is gonna only depend on the height. All right, so the potential difference is only gonna represent the height difference or the difference in elevation from a gravitational perspective. Okay. Okay, guys, whenever you're ready, just jump in. I'll give you five points. It's a. Yeah, the best answer. Okay, those, those of you guys who contribute, give yourself five points. So that's the amount of energy they'll bring you to charge. Uh, the rest of you guys, if you pick A, give yourself points in all right, so gravitational voltage or potential is related to the height difference. It's related to height, altitude, height, elevation, or whatever. Okay, one of the things that I want you to notice that, all right, every single point here is going to be at the same altitude. So this plane that you're looking at, let's identify the plane. This plane that you do. Okay, cool. I'm going to really be down with that one. All right, so the plane that we're looking at, this section, everything is at the same potential right here. This is known as an equal potential surface, which means that each and every single point that you look at is going to be at the same potential. There's a second equal potential surface. Every single point on this plane is going to be at the same surface. All right, so these are known as equal potential or equal potential surfaces. All right, so U4 is going to represent an equal potential surface, U3, U2, and U1. All right, this is the analogy, electrostatic analogy. And each and every single uh, ring that you're looking at is going to be at the same voltage or potential for a point of All right, so these are equal potential surfaces. This is V1, the potential surface 1. Every single point is going to be at the same potential. V2, once again, is the second equal potential surface in this whole point. Okay, guys, how much work does it take to bring move a chart along this line? By the electrostatic force. It's going to be no work at all, right? Electrostatic force is going to be 90 degrees to the surface. All right, so the electrostatic force is going to be 90 degrees to the surface. Okay. 
electrostatic force is going to radially go up. All right, so, okay, these are not straight lines, but it's good enough. All right, so electrostatic force is always going to be 90 degrees to the equal potential surfaces. So the amount of work done by the electrostatic force is going to be zero. All right, so remember the work, for work to happen, the force needs to have a component on the direction of motion. So the force has to cause displacement, and this force has to have a component on the direction of motion. If this angle is 90 degrees, no work is being done. If this is 90 degrees, the amount of work done is going to be zero, which means that the electrostatic force does absolutely no work along the electrostatic equal potential surface. That's what it means. So no work is being done along the equal potential surfaces by the electrostatic force. All right, so no work is being done. All right, the amount of work done, this, this requires a work being done, moving the charge in this direction, but the path of motion doesn't matter. All right, so along the, in between the surfaces, the work needs to be done. How much work is being done if you're taking path number two? The right. amount of work done is, once again, is gonna be zero because the only thing you have to worry about is just starting on the endpoints of the All right, um, jump in whenever you're writing. Once again, I'm gonna give you five points in the best answer. A? Uh, I agree, A. <clears throat> yeah, I say A. All right, so those of you guys who pick A, um, I'll give you two points for that one. A is not the best answer. Okay, so if A is not the best answer, okay, so let's go with A. Let's just focus on it. Electric field is constant in magnitude and direction. On the equal <laughs> Guys, the electric field is constant. Okay, notice that the electric field is not, it doesn't have a component along the direction of equal potential. The electric field is 90 degrees to equal potential. So hence the reason why A does not work out. Okay, so that was a good try. And uh, hopefully this was a good learning experience. So that didn't work. <laughs> so A, this makes that. Okay, so what else you guys want to find? B. <laughs> I think we're going to go through everything with that space. Electric charge is constant in magnitude. What? Did you say B? Did you guys say B or D? I was thinking maybe D. Like as, as in dog, D as in dog. Did you say D as in dog? Okay, make an argument. Well, in like an, in like an, for equal potential lines, it's like, I'm going to assume the potential <laughs> energy is like the same throughout, I would assume. So. Guys, the, along these lines, the charges are free to move without getting energy, right? All right, if, along the equal potential lines, the charges can move. The electric field is not going to do any work on them, so there's no reason for these charges to speed up or slow down or change direction, so they're not going to get energy. So D is the best answer. So charge may be moved at constant speed without any work against electric force. So electric, electric field has no components, so it's not going to do any work on these charges. All right, uh, what is it that I'm interested in here? Um, I don't like... Okay, so the thunder flat to the ground, so this is a typical voltage difference. That's going to be, this is going to be 100 million volts. Okay, so that's interesting. Inside the TV tube, that's going to be 10,000 volts. Okay, what else is interesting? Our battery, car's battery is 12 volts. I think everybody knows that. Flashlight battery, one and a half. And high power lines, okay, this is about a million to 100 million, 100,000 to a million. That's what we're looking at. Bum, bum, bum. All right, so this is